to accept Joel's resignation would be the appropriate thing to do at this time. Council move. Second. Discussion. <coughs> Big thanks to him for yeah. another oh, state yeah, right, yeah. victory. Mm -hmm. And his work with the kids. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, um, call for the question. Motion to open the head softball coaching position for the 2014 season. I'll second. Discussion? Call for the question. Is that where do we get um, same thing we do? Yeah, we yeah, put it on the OPI website and those types of places that we post these positions and see if we can get somebody interested in that one. Okay. Okay, so call for the question. All those in favor? Aye. Uh -huh. uh -huh. And then we have head boys basketball coach. Mr. Baylock resigned his position, effectively opening the position. So um, this time uh, we would like the board to know we have two applicants apply for the position. After doing a review of the applications, we invited both individuals to in for an interview and conducted an interview for that position. After having reviewed uh, the applications and the interviews, uh, we saw that one candidate definitely stood out above the other candidates. We had uh, we had Boone stand up and really do a nice job. The thing that stood out in his application was he had relevant experience. He was a head coach. He had recent experience as a coach and. Uh, He's an educator, so we know that he's been professionally trained to work with kids. And those things just all came together that showed us that uh, he was a quality individual. But beyond that, the answers to the questions in the interview were solved. Really strong answers to his questions. And he also um, did a really nice job in terms of providing us with an example of a practice plan that he'd lay out. He came prepared for the interview and had a typed out sheet of what his practices would look like. The thing that we were able to see in that is that um, about 65% of his practice plan matched up very closely with um, what our kids are used to in their current practicing, uh, matched up with what Coach Bearlocker has done. And one of the things that I believe is that Coach Bearlocker did such a nice job as a coach with our kids that you know that continuity if you could somehow find it would be very beneficial for the kids that are currently in the high school program um, that was very impressive to me having seen that in that in the practice plan and finally the other thing that really stood out to me was that between the two candidates that we interviewed one had a definite commitment to a summer program where they would be able to uh, be available to take kids to camps and whatnot, uh, and the other person did not have a very well-defined uh, plan in that case. So with that, um, we noted that there was one candidate that stood out, and from there, we moved forward with checking the references on that candidate. The reference checks on that candidate panned out to prove very fruitful, and so at that point, the decision was made that there was no reason not to make the recommendation for hire of that individual. So at that point, the um, recommendation is to go ahead, go ahead and recommend Lee Nelson as the head boys basketball coach for the 2013-14 school year. And Mr. Barrylocker was a part of that, and if you'd like to ask any questions of him, it's available here tonight before that. <coughs> <clears throat> okay, so now we can have discussion. Um, yes, sir. Good evening. My name is Jay Dixon. lived in Florence for 20 years. And I coached here for 10 years and stepped down when my second son was born to focus on my family. Those of you who have known me over the years in Florence can affirm that I'm blessed with a wonderful family and the love of the art of fly fishing and the game of basketball. Here tonight, because I believe that strong leadership should be grounded in civility, integrity, and respect for each Florence school employee and prospective employee. Due diligence, decency, and due process should be a leader's foundation for all interactions with his or her 
present and future employees. Each deserves no less. The result is a healthy, vibrant school culture which serves the needs and dreams of its young people. It goes without saying, I would have been honored to have been chosen the varsity basketball coach, but I was particularly puzzled by the fact that no one bothered to contact my references, each of whom could speak to my knowledge of the game, my relationship with kids, and the areas I need to improve. Nevertheless, please know that regardless of the outcome of this board meeting, I will always support the academic and athletic life of this school. The Florence com School community means a lot to me, and I'm confident that each of us will always share the responsibility of holding each other accountable to the highest possible standards. Thank you. Any other discussion? Mr. Bryan? I'd like to caution the board. Uh, this administration, this current administration, has a history of telling board members they've interviewed people who did not apply for the job. Any further discussion? All right, so I'm going to call for the question. Well, I, I, I'll oh. wait for a oh. Yeah, I have a little. Um, right. I'd like to comment. I, uh, I'd never met uh, Jay prior to, to this. I don't know how I've lived through all that, too. We just haven't crossed paths. But he did, uh, he did get a, a hold of me early in this uh, process and via my email and I, I did sit and listen to Jay a lot. He sent me a lot of information on himself. He sent me a lot of references. He saw it, sent me letters. I've got, I mean, I, there, I brought, I mean, it's, it's endless. It, and he's got, uh, I did take the time to call and ask about, about Jay and he, it was, I mean, I, it was solid. I mean, I had nothing, it was, it was phenomenal what he, what I found out about Jay. I, I felt it was kind of my responsibility. He was upset of how the how the how it went he felt uh he had a lot of issues i sat and i listened to him i gave him my email i gave him my phone number and, and told him that you know i'll be happy to take all the information you have and look into this for you um i also at the same time requested um from the office to see if to see all the other applicants after i talked to jay i requested that three times via email and i have to this day, I've not seen anything on this other, the coach that we're hiring, Boone Nelson. I did take the time to, my only resource was I Googled his name. I found out a little bit about him. It, it looks like he's from Polstrip. Uh, I got uh, his record as a varsity coach was like 25 and 60 something. I don't have the exact, I, I do have him here if you need that. Um, I don't believe he lives here. I don't, I just, to me, I don't, I don't have enough information here to go anything off of Boone Nelson. I got, I had a ton handed to me off of Jay. Listening to him, he's the most, one of the most passionate people I've ever met in, in the short two, three weeks that I've known him. Uh, looking at his history here at Florence is phenomenal. His wife is a substitute teacher here. His children go here. He's coached endless. You know, uh, it, it looks to me like his opportunity, in my opinion, was cut short. So, my research into this, uh, I'm not very comfortable with it. As a matter of fact, I mean, I, I'm more than uncomfortable if this is our hiring practice. The simple fact that no one even took the time to call his references. I've, I'm a, I've employed people, and that's the very first thing I do on anybody, even if I don't even like them. When the minute they walk in the door, I give them the common courtesy to call up and see if maybe my impression of them is wrong. So that that set, that did not set well with me at all. So um, I just wanted to let that know that that's, that's, that's the information I was, you'll be given time almost. Thank you. Um, that was the information I was given as a board member. So Jay took the time to get to know me. I took the time back. I know nothing of Mr. Boone. I was never given, uh, I didn't see his practice plan. I didn't see his, anything about him I asked for his uh, his resume, I did not receive any of that back from the school. So based off of what you're giving me, I have nothing to support your guys' decision. Told? Yes. I was never told to bring a practice plan. I would love to bring a practice plan. Okay. I'm going into an interview to answer questions about lifetime skills of kids. If there's something else I'm supposed to bring in and they'd like to see a practice plan, I would love to. No one asked you for a practice plan. 
Okay. Anytime. Mr. First Officer, you want to speak? Let me ask you a question. I, I may be out of realm here. Can I tell you my experience with this fellow here? Sure. Is it okay? My first experience with this fellow right here, I didn't know from Adam. Okay? Walks into my house, wants to tell me how this Mr. Bearlocker is the worst guy in this community. Secondly, I don't see this kid in the gym other than doing negative things in front of my wife. We were, we were actually, we're going to leave this community if he got the coaching job. This is absolutely, what you're saying is false. Who, can you state your name? I'm not sure. Who Robin Christofferson. He knows what he's talking about. Okay, all right, guys. He's not going to... Throw me under the bus. I'm sorry, sorry. Hey, I just said it's all good, man. Hold I didn't on. say anything else about his personality. I'm Hold sorry. On. Guys, yeah, we can't, we're not going to, we can't go... Okay, I'm sorry. Okay, I'm sorry. We can't go that. Does somebody else have something else to say that's not a personal... Yes, sir. My name is Tono Lippi. I've lived in this community from the time that I was a fourth grader until I graduated from high school. I've known Jay Dixon since I was in seventh grade. I just want to say that I've, not seventh grade, ninth grade, somewhere in there. I wanted to say that he operates with the utmost integrity and was one of the most intense coaches I ever had. He taught me a lot about the game and I have every confidence that he would be an excellent head coach. Thank you for that. Great. Yes, sir. Thank you. Yeah, my name's Boone Nelson. I'm the gentleman being recommended for the job tonight. I have uh, been an educator and a coach the last nine years. Uh, the number that Mr. Reynolds told that threw out there, 25 and 60-something. Yeah, I can't tell you how incorrect that is. Again, nine years. Six of those nine years have been winning seasons. Um, uh, the only thing I could think is that information probably came from Max Preps. Look, yeah, look further, well, that's all I have. You look further into Max correct. Preps. That's all I, have, I was, so. I'm still Cole Strip's coach. Apparently, I went five and seventeen last year. I, I resigned. I'm, I'm, I'm sorry, resigned at the end of 2011, 2012 school year. So, um, again, I'm, I'm extremely excited for this opportunity. I've had the privilege over the last three weeks of getting to know these kids. Um, I, I've met a lot of their parents. It's, they're great kids. They got fantastic attitudes. A tremendous work ethic that we've seen on the basketball court, and you know these kids display nothing but sportsmanship and teamwork, and, and they're going to be a great group of kids to work with. Um, Coach Hanson and myself, since June 1st, have taken the kids to 21 games so far this summer. Uh, this next weekend, we're going to Anaconda Friday and Saturday. The following weekend, we'll take we're taking two teams to Frenchtown for a JV and a varsity tournament, and we'll be host, hoping to host a uh, a triangular scrimmage this summer, and then again home finishing up the, uh, the summer schedule with a tournament in uh, Western Montana College for uh, <coughs> a team jamboree down there. So the kids are going to get a lot of basketball in, and I'm looking forward to putting as much work and as much time as I can with the kids and, and getting busy. So, yes, sir. Uh, yep. Hey, thanks for speaking. Uh, it's the first opportunity I got to talk to you. I asked for information on you. I didn't got nothing. Didn't. I would have called you if I got you. Sure. So that's where I want you to know where I stand. Okay. That's fine. Where are a couple questions for you now you're here. Where where are you from, Colstra? No, I'm from Helen, Montana. Grew up. Where are you, Chris? Are you live in, where do you live now? No mind. Are you are you gonna travel to and from I'm my here address you'll be Thompson Falls, is that where you live? No, or I'm something? moving out of Thompson Falls currently. Okay. Yes, so my wife just my wife Maggie just accepted a position as a network administrator for administration for the uh, Lone Rock School District. Okay, so, so our family is right. relocating to Florence. Okay. You know, we're also very excited to have both of our kids enrolled in the Florence School District as well as uh, become part of the community. And you said you're an educator. What, um, what year? Yeah, I'm actually K-12 certified. Elementary education is my uh, mm -hmm. where I got my bachelor's degree from uh, Carroll College in Helena, Montana. So you're a teacher today. Okay. Yes, sir. And then I'm also uh, mm -hmm. certified as an industrial technology teacher. If you want to clear up your record for me? I didn't want to throw you on the bus like that. That's all I had off Max Press. You know, to throw out a number, I couldn't honestly throw out a number. Again, six, I've had of my nine seasons, six of them have been winning seasons. You throw out, you know, summer basketball, all, all those games. That's fine. You, you, I'm saying you might want to clear that up with them because that's what the friend, that's all I had. So, okay. thank you for speaking. Yes, Colby, I want to address this to you. Mm -hmm. And I realize that you're a new board member here, and there are certain there are certain things that you can do as a board member and certain things that you can't do. Okay. And one of the things that you just did, calling references from another, you know, applicant or whatever, um, that's totally out of your scheme as a board member. Because the board only acts 
as a board. And so I can't check references on any no. employee here. We have we have mm -hmm. we have both an athletic director and a superintendent who have been assigned that particular assignment. Now, if you have questions, and certainly, you know, which people, I did, I people, asked Mr. People McGee, are right? going to um, call us, and, and and often do, and if they do, then we refer them to the individual. Usually, it's an administrator that's handled that particular situation. So I I base I base my decision totally off of what I'm told. Then no. I don't have any research. No, no, that's not right. When you come to the board meeting mm -hmm. and we have discussion, if you've got questions at that point. That's when you can ask all the questions you want to. But as far as going out as a loan trustee and, and doing what you think somebody else should have done in, in administration is totally unacceptable. Is there a law there? So that's you out. Lose, that's you against lose your the legal board. protection what? as a trustee. Well, he emailed it to my trustee account. I know. What, having the information for you is fine. It was sent to me. But that's what I did. Calling, yeah. But taking the responsibility of calling uh, another number and checking out basically or on these references is not my that's job totally out of, that's not that's your job. that's the, that's that's Derek Sam's job they didn't do no, no. They, they did call a reference of, of the individual you called you did call one of his references you're saying I'm not doing my job no you're telling me no, I'm supposed saying, to leave no I didn't say that, that. Jay I'm told me you did not do that you didn't Mr. call his reference so that's all no need okay. to because the top candidate as we had seen it at that point the decision was already made the, at that point the top candidate once their references had checked out and there was nothing, no hiccups or glitches or anything that would have given us a big red flag warning, then at that point, there was very little that could have persuaded us differently in a reference check with Mr. Dixon because in his interview, spoke tremendously to me. And I don't know about Mr. Bearlocker, but get to him, but it definitely spoke tremendously to me no. as well as recent involvement, head coaching experience. Yeah, I understand that you told me that. I understand that. So, I mean, those those are things that, you know, I'm just, I was just, take it like that. I just, you know, one of his things was equal opportunity. I think we're supposed to be an equal opportunity that employer. That doesn't mean that we have to check references. And that's fine. That's, that's okay. And if you but, guys but, operate but you, that way, that's fine. But you do need to understand, Colby, that mm -hmm. we need to work as a board. And well, what you better. Did, I need some of these what, policies. You okay, better start so, hitting me with them, for I, I'm okay, going to keep so doing things wrong. So what we're going to be doing? Yeah. Yeah. I think Miss. I think Cass going to be having our our the attorney that represents our district is going to come at hopefully in the June work meeting and go over a lot of these things. Kaliva, so Kaliva, Elizabeth. Her name is Kaliva. Yeah, still employed with us? Yes. She is. And there's also oh, okay. workshops they have for new trustees in other locations okay. too. So the reason that you did not receive the application and resumes is because that's completely outside of a board member's perspective. Well, maybe an email back to me saying that would have stopped a lot of that. I sent four of them. Okay, appreciate that. Yeah, so. Can I say something? Yes, Mr. Finley. I've known Mr. Dixon for a good many years, and I've also known Mr. Bearlocker for a good many years. And I have no doubt about either one's veracity, but if Mr. Bearlocker says recommends a certain person to me i need to go with that because it's he's on top of it thank you all right, all right. So mr harris, harris just a, are summer programs uh, mandatory and the other thing is i just wanted to say that i don't know either one of these two gentlemen but how sad how sad that it has to come to something like this because of uh, Way things are going around here. Right. Mr. Bearlocker, would you like to speak to summer programs just briefly? With summer programs? Would you give part uh, of that? Right now, there's. Like, are we voting on? No. It's part of the discussion. We're, we're still in discussion. One of the points. Are summer programs it, it's mandatory? Difference, are they mandatory? So no. The answer is no. No. Why do we right. do them? Because? Because it opens up opportunities for kids that cannot afford camps. Can come to open gym and still see the coach every week a couple of times during the week in the open season no cost to the student uh, it's a great time for them to get practice in uh, let them know let them interact with other kids in our community uh, open gym is you know if you don't do it you're not going to compete 
makes a difference between having a winning season and not, right? Absolutely. Right now I have uh, girls basketball doing open gym. I have volleyball doing open gym. I have boys basketball doing open gym. I have wrestling camp. The only ones that I have that are not performing open gym right now are softball, wrestling, and track. Everything else is performing. And, you know, one of the problems we have with the late graduation is that those guys are, are ready to get into the gym. And the gym has been tied up here until June 11. We had some confrontation there with the janitors and stuff trying to get things done. And I got to do a better job contacting them and make sure we can get everybody into the old gym too. Okay. So, Mrs. Nelson, you wanted to speak? I did. I just want to say something real quick. My name is Maggie Nelson. I happen to be Boone's wife. For 11 years, I've been supporting him as a wife, a coach, and a mother. Um, for the past nine years, I've been supporting him behind his team bench as a coach. You guys won't find another guy who's going to dedicate as much time to these kids and a program as Boone. I know that firsthand. I live with it. I see it. You know, um, head coaching takes a lot. It takes a lot of support from families. It takes a lot of support from community. It takes a lot of support from the school. In order to be successful, you have to put in the time and, and dedicate the hours. Boone does that. I can tell you guys, after varsity basketball games, when we go home at night, our, game, our night doesn't end. Boone spends the next three hours reviewing film after every game, road game or home game, this is what he does. We'll spend three hours reviewing film to game plan and make changes for whatever needs to be done for the next game. I, you know, as his wife, of course I'm going to support him, but I just want you guys to know there's, you're not going to find somebody who's going to dedicate as much time to the success of these kids as Boone will. That's all I wanted to say. So I'm just going to make a comment since I can. Um, I, I don't want you guys to feel like that um, that welcome to Florence or not welcome to Florence. <laughs> little tiny schools. I went to high school in Reed Point. Okay, so little tiny schools live and die by their basketball program. That's why there's so many people sitting here in the audience today. So it's it, it, we'd be arguing over whoever it was sitting here. I'm sure because everybody would have an opinion. So it, it's not personal. It's just how we are about basketball. And so um, I, I just want you to say, uh, to know that, that it's not, you know, this isn't personal about either of you. This is about basketball and what the school's gonna, gonna benefit for the kids. So, no, you know, uh, okay, that's just my two cents. All right, so any further discussion? I'd like to welcome you, and I think it's great that you thought with because I know that the wife is always the best part of a good coach, and I look forward to, to supporting you no matter what happens with this. I just felt my rights were violated, and I want to understand that for myself, and it's that simple. Um, at the risk of getting emotional, you know, I've spent 10 years with face, face insulation on no side of my home and dedicated to kids in the school. And this man's known me for 20 years. He wrote me a letter of recommendation when I was 25 years old and knows my dedication to kids and the work that went into the school. So it just kind of hurt that I was not treated with the respect I thought I deserved. And that's as simple as that. Okay, so we're going to uh, call for the question. And uh, does everybody know what the motion is here? All right, so all in favor of the motion to hire Mr. Nelson? Aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. <coughs> All right, welcome, thank you. Thank you. You're gonna love us with Mr. Grabowski, the keyboard. I was stretching. I was stretching. Okay. All right, so we are on to... Um, Can I interrupt real quick? I just wanna shake his hand because I gotta go to work and go and I see my kids. Okay, I sure. nothing else went for so, He does a nice job. Uh, he's fine with standing with Boone and he's recommending Kyle as his assistant coach. Program and uh, I am recommending to the board that, that be the case uh, that Kyle is continuing to stay in our program and move up to the JV position. So, um, because he's in house, it's not something that we open up and advertise, but we will have a C squad position that we will need to open up and advertise. So, the recommendation is to move forward with Kyle Hansen as the JV boys basketball coach. Also, awesome. move. Second. Discussion? So you're, you're, we don't have to open, you're saying that you don't have to open the position because he's in-house? Correct. We have in-house transfers. In-house gets first dibs, right? And then for teaching positions, we advertise in-house for 10 days before we go out of house and 
like was Miss Fruitley, she wanted to go from one or two up to fifth grade. And, you know, we talk to those individuals, speak with them, and do an interview with them. And with Kyle, he's an equality individual. Okay. Question. Uh, so, further analysis. discussion? Call for the question. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Welcome. Thank you for hanging in with us. Okay. And then we need a motion to move to open C Squad because we're going to have to advertise that, right? Correct. Okay. I'll move to open the C Squad Boys Basketball Court position for the 13 14 school year. Second. Discussion? Call for the question. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Somebody go <coughs> All right. So, wrestling coach, assistant wrestling coach. Okay. We have the assistant wrestling coach. Uh, we need to open that position. I'll move to open up an assistant wrestling coach position for the 13 14 school year. Second. Discussion? Call for the question. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. System football coach. We've had the resignation of Mr. Larson as our assistant football coach, so he just with an opening. I'll move to open up an assistant football coaching position for the 13 14 school year. Second. Discussion? Call for the question. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. And then uh, Jessica Santi, who was our assistant track coach, was also an assistant volleyball coach. And with her moving across the state to accept a teaching job, we have a vac vacancy in our uh, volleyball program that needs to be filled. I move to open up an assistant volleyball coaching position for the 13th year. Second. Discussion? Call for the question. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. And we have middle school volleyball coach Jeff Muller, who is our uh, head varsity basketball coach and has coached in the middle school before. He is interested in being a coach in the middle school once again. Also move. Discussion? Call for the question. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All right, so now we're going to go to reports. Mr. Grabowski, you get to go first. Um, we're done. <laughs> uh, graduation went well. Uh, thank you guys for attending. Um, it was, uh, I think everything ran pretty well. Thank you. Um, it was toasty. Um, and a little on the long side. We're exploring some different options. Uh, one thing that we've tossed around for a couple of years now is to actually move our, our uh, um, scholarship awarding night to a different night and then maybe do the slideshow that evening also um, just to kind of separate it too. I know we like it but um, at the same time we can run the slideshow before graduation up on the screen and I've seen quite a few schools that do that um, and then we also have those kiosks out in the gym or out in the foyer that we can run them on there too so those are some possibilities we're looking at just because it takes so long uh, we have some classes, you know, hitting 70 plus <coughs> coming up here in the next couple of years. Um, and we have 59 the other day, so it could take a while. I don't think we need to get enough kids or they're due. Me they too. do like they're due. I, I agree with I that. I thought it was just awesome. That Even though I had to sit in a hot chair for two and whatever Thanks. hours, I loved it. And I was, it's one of those warm and fuzzy nights. Yeah. When you know you can just sit there and really appreciate what all the teachers have done and the parents and you know it was a great night. The band was good. I mean, it was just it was awesome. It went well. Um, but we would certainly entertain <coughs> the discussion of having the slideshow <laughs> before. Yeah. Well, we'd entertain it. Yes, we'd entertain it. <laughs> I guess mean we're go. <laughs> um, and then on the ACT, right ACT right. scores, if you guys remember, they announced uh, yes. that nine or ten students had actually gotten uh, 27 or better. It was actually one more, too. Uh, Laura Austin's daughter, um, Courtney, um, she took her test as a sophomore when she was in Indiana, so she was also higher than a 27. So we ended up having 11 <coughs> students with better than a 27 on their ACTs. Very impressive. Um, and then all our, we have preliminaries on ACT tests that the junior class took, the PLN, which is the pre-ACTs that the sophomores took. Um, we'll have the SAT results coming back that students took, um, the CRT results that everybody took. So we'll compile all of that stuff for some, uh, and do some data mining on that so that when the teachers come back they can explore um, how to better get students ready for college readiness and all that that's really coming down the pike that's getting pushed hard you know to be college ready um, so we're going to explore how to look at that with the data 
So, and we're done. <laughs> I want to ask how the choir trip was. The choir trip went well. Uh, they had a really, really good time. Um, everything went pretty dang smooth, so that was nice. Um, it was mm -hmm. tough on the students, though, for the timing of it, to be honest. A lot of the kids, they had to cram in finals, um, two, three, four finals the week they left, before they left. And that was kind of hard on some of those kids, trying to get all of that put in the place. Um, the, uh, uh, the just doing it at the end of the year, but they did, um, when they were in Seattle, they did uh, house stays, you know, and, and that all went really well too. That's always something I worry about. Um, but it went well, so good. everything everything worked out pretty good. She'd really like to do it again, um, not next year, but in another year or so. But I, I'd really like her to look at a different time frame of when to go. Um, so it makes it kind of hard. Um, and then the final thing I have for you guys is um, with the calendar. And that is that we had so many kids checking out early this year because of our late ending date. Um, it was super, super hectic. Um, trying to get those kids all checked out, trying to pay attention to their attendance, trying to pay attention to their final grades and all of that. It was really, really difficult. Way, way, way more kids checking out early um, than are involved with uh, 4-H, for example. Um, we had kids that were out for camps. Um, we had kids that were out for boys state, girls state. Um, we had kids that were out for rodeo finals. Um, we had kids that were out for jobs, um, example, the uh, Montana Conservation Corps uh, jobs that a lot of the kids applied for for summer work started Monday. So they had to check out last week in order to get everything done. So that's pushing teachers to try to get finals done earlier for those kids, which means then you're, you're looking at creating different finals for different kids or you're ending your classes early and having to babysit kids for a couple of days, that type of thing. So it's pretty difficult. Um, and next year we're going even later and we have three days because we end on Wednesday. So just something I'd like you guys to think about in the future when we look at calendars. And that's not just our high school. Yeah, I was going to say middle school experience. Similar situation. All-star football game. All-star football game. Um, as of, I think, on Wednesday of last week, or Tuesday of last week, we already had, I think, 30 early checkouts. So does the calendaring, the calendaring committee recognize all this? Because when it comes to yeah. us, we're relying on yeah. them right. we and had, all their staff. Yeah, we had two groups, remember, that, that kind of did things. We had the calendar committee that created a calendar that they liked, we also, but they also created a calendar that got voted on, and the staff vote um, was heavier on the other one with the later date. The calendar committee's recommendation was a different calendar. So there's that's, I that's where it that, got mixed up. That, that, that gets together because yeah. as a board, I think we tried to support what comes right, to us. Right, if the teachers right. are asking for this, then mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you know, then that's what we try to support. So generally, if you, my feeling is, if you create a committee, the committee makes that decision and they make the recommendation. You don't have to take it out to a vote for everybody because not everybody understands what's going on. So if the committee does that and they make that recommendation, that's what we should go with. So did the committee feel empowered then to to not take it to the vote? Or? Yeah, I yeah, think they, they are the, now. the teachers union and the committee are, are in line now where okay. the committee will right. be making yeah. recommendation. All right, well, you bring it to us next year and we'll yeah. talk about it again, right? Okay. Any other questions? Mm -hmm. I think we're good, unless we missed some other great fun event we should be hearing about. Mm -hmm. Well, Margaret went on that choir trip. Yeah, she, she hasn't stopped grinning yet. <laughs> <laughs> I know they liked the, the music experience. Um, I always forget what it's called, that museum where they go in, and they actually get um, a set of headphones, and they walk through this music experience place, and they get everywhere they go, it's playing something different. It's the history of music of the Seattle, basically, but it's the history of rock and roll, too, but it's the history of the Seattle area specifically. But, so a lot of Jimi Hendrix, a lot of Beatles stuff and everything else, so that was pretty neat. And then they all got to go into a studio and play guitar, and they had a lady there that showed them how to play and everything. It was, they really had a good time. Well, and her timing, I think, of picking the trip had to do with her connection sports. to somebody there. It was that and sports season, mm -hmm. clearing it out so that she could get more kids to go. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but she had, she had somebody that she coordinated right. with on she, that end, too, right. which was kind of a deciding yeah. factor. 
I bet you she can come up with something different next time. Okay, all right. Um, this one. Well, so we had our final SOAR assembly, and we had that in the gym. We invited the drum line to come and perform, so the kids loved that as part of their final assembly. And then we tried something new. We had uh, root beer floats for the entire elementary student body following that assembly, kind of as a culminating celebration, which the kids really loved. Um, so that went well. So we'll set our sights for next year for those recognition assemblies. Uh, we had our track and field day last Friday, and I think for the first time in five or six years, we didn't get rained out. We, did good. we yeah. had beautiful weather. Mm -hmm. um, everybody had a great time. It was a lot of fun. And usually on track and field day, we coincide our volunteer luncheon at that same time to recognize um, all the volunteers who come into our school and give up their time and energy. And so we had our volunteer luncheon, and that was very well attended. So we appreciate all the volunteers that uh, support our students and our staff. And finally, um, we had applied for the bronze recognition award for MBI, and we were notified that we will receive that award at the elementary level for the first time this year. So we're excited about that. Can you explain a little bit about that again? Yes, for MBI, the Montana Behavioral Initiative, and that's also part of the SOAR assembly, um, the MBI team worked really hard to meet the criteria. Um, the bronze award is kind of the entry level award um, that uh, the state recognizes schools that are making the effort to try and address uh, student behaviors and teach student ex expectations. So your MBI is your bullying thing, right? Right. Well, it's the, it addresses more than people the bullying. For the people that don't know, people, I guess, and sometimes when you don't ask, you know, right. there's people that don't know. Yes. Yes. Okay. That's, that's great. Thank you. And Ms. Backhand. Yes. Middle school will also be going to uh, pick up our award next week. For, we'll be getting the silver this year. So we've bat, been at this for a few years. Um, it's quite a conference, the MBI. It's a thousand people. And so you go up on stage in front of the whole thousand, and accept the award and have your picture taken with Denise Juno. It's kind of, it's kind of fun. Well, that <laughs> is. Yeah, cool. so anyway, we'll be doing that next week. Um, Deanna Horsons will be going along with me to MBI. And then uh, I thought promotion went well last night. Thanks for coming. I, I thought we were cool. sweet. We were an hour. It was sweet. <laughs> And it was she good. said it was going to be 45 I know. Minutes. She I know. went over 15. But yeah, that extra okay. speech, but I it's thought okay. it was great. Really it was great. The chair number was. Oh, that was, that was awesome. Yeah. 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 So it was impressive to see how many people filled up the gym. It was yeah. quite yeah, proud. Yeah, well, well attended. So but I like the way that you worked it so that, they, that the students can come up in groups and share what they, I mean, I, I mean, I remember we try to yeah, that's put a focus on the kids. Yeah, it's like because it's, it's a celebration at the end of their yeah. elementary years and then moving into high school. Yeah. So anyway, um, yeah, that went well, and then the dance that followed went smoothly too. Oh, and thanks for the food yeah. at the well. That's the parent association <laughs> that that puts that on. So make sure that they get recognition. Yes. They did a nice job at the reception. Yeah. The yeah. reception was really good. Yeah, yeah it was. You went for the reception? I did. Wow. Yeah, it was beyond cake well, and lunch I had, this year. Yeah, yeah it was, they had trays. lunch meat and mm -hmm. buns yeah. and whole business and fruit and cheese Rolls. and everything. Yeah. But but I, I was going to know that. Yeah, they did a nice <laughs> job. And then um, we set, I met with the parents this evening before, um, the parent association before this meeting, and we set the meet and greet potluck that we start, they started last year for August 28th at 6 o'clock, so that's kind of taking the place of the, our back to school night. It's the same type of thing, but the kids come and get their schedules. They had a potluck last year. We, I talk a little bit, the Parent Association talks a little bit, and then we just kind of, kind of a get together, back to school get together. So we set that tonight. Planning for next year already. And trying to finish this one up. Thank you. Is your bear locker? Yeah, uh, Big Sky High School has hired a new cross country coach, and uh, she's very enthusiastic and works very hard. And she's got a very good name in, in the cross country business. Uh, since we co-op with them, um, we weren't able to get her with our students here. So I hope to send an outreach <coughs> program, phone call along with uh, what time are open gyms 
are for all the kids and all the sports once all the coaches get organized so that those athletes and students can know exactly when open gym is and stuff like that. Like I said before, four out of the seven already active in it. Um, summer programs are very important. And like I said before, you know, it's the kids that can't afford to go to camp and stuff are, are getting a great job. Uh, you know, our coaches come in and coach and stuff during that time. Very legal and stuff. Anything can ha anything between June 1st and August uh, 1st, you can coach. Um, we need to hire seven more coaches. Uh, which is a lot. <coughs> we have had some turnover this year. And I appreciate all the coaches that have coached this year. They do an outstanding job. Um, I appreciate Dennis for down working on the football field. We had some uh, wear and tear on our football field. He went down there. And we bought some sod and stuff, and he did a lot of hard work and irrigated it. And he's taken care of it, and it's going to be a great addition to our football field this fall. Um, our programs this year, uh, out of the eight, um, everybody succeeded. It was a great year. We had a lot of state places. Uh, our band, our choir, our choral, um, our speech and debate, our de um, drama program, incredible. These guys take a lot of pride. There's a lot of schools that would like to be Florence Carlton. And uh, if you want to attend an AD meeting with me, you'll be amazed. They really think we have it going on here, and we do. We're very, very fortunate. It's hard to get to this level, and it's hard to stay at it. And we've been very fortunate, and it, it, it's, it says a lot about our parents and our kids. And I appreciate it a lot. It's a lot of fun. It's great to come to work every day. Um, the schedules are all set. Um, we do have some changes probably in softball, and that will be when the new coach gets hired on. Uh, we always have spring break, which is really hard. Uh, with our regionalized scheduling, we always end up playing Loyola on our spring break. And that is also the time that we have our foreign trips with our students. So uh, right now we just schedule it in with Loyola during spring break. And then lots of times it gets changed because it's a big game. And uh, we want both teams to be at the maximum you know, performance level and stuff like that. But uh, we try not to make changes, but there are always these things that happen. Uh, wrestling schedule, I haven't been able to contact the wrestling coach for the last couple of weeks. He's been out. Uh, in Eastern Montana, doing some training and stuff like that. There might be a few changes in there, but uh, not very many. Um, I want to thank the Booster Club. Um, John and Dan and I attended the Booster Club meeting here last week, and uh, those ladies do a great job, and we appreciate all the support and, and stuff that they do for us. And, uh, and uh, they're working on maybe a golf tournament. Uh, I'm having a hard time getting the coaches to buy in on that. Um, they do a lot. And for them to spend their whole summer out there, you know, coaching and then planning on the uh, Booster Club, um, which might take over the golf tournament a lot more and get it out of the, the coach's hand. I'd really appreciate it. We're out of the mill business, basically, with, uh, with uh, fundraising money. Um, there's no way that we can be applicable anymore. And so there will not be any mills bought by our, our school district, fundraising money or anything like that. Um, I just want to thank you guys for supporting us. And, I appreciate it. Can I ask when's homecoming? Homecoming is at 7. Uh, 28, excuse me. So Volleyball it. will be home on the 27th. Uh, volleyball at Ronan the 26th. And then the football game will be the 28th at 1 o'clock. Okay. And there is not a Grizzly game that weekend, and that's why. You know, people okay. always want to know why we pick certain sure. weekends. Sure, that's fine. And uh, we try not to have that. And problem. when's the first home game for football? The first home game will be Ta Townsend on September 6th. Okay. We really try hard to keep things off school board meeting nights. And sometimes <laughs> there's just no way. Um, certain schools will not play on Wednesday night like Lyola and stuff like that. And uh, say it's uh, you know, NBA weekend or... Uh, you know, Holy Week or something, we have some problems. So, thanks. Thank you. Okay, Mr. McGee. All right, well, someone chimed in on the Booster Club. That was one of the things that I had planned on speaking to. But one of the things that we have done recently is we spent a week with our auditor. Um, the auditor has come in and gone over the finances of the school district, and they currently are uh, taking their data back to their offices and are compiling their uh, compliance report for the school district. 
Um, we hope to have uh, Kim Downing here in August to go over that report with the Board of Trustees and to explain, you know, the findings of the audit. Um, I do want you to know that, you know, when it's all said and done and the auditor is ready to walk out of the office, I ask, how does Florence Carlton compare? When you've had a chance to look at our business, how do we compare and to all the other districts that you guys serve? And Denning and Downing is one of the bigger firms in western Montana. They, they do quite a few school districts. And he said, without a doubt, you guys are well above average with your, your business model. So that's always nice to hear. Um, uh, Mrs. Morgan, you know, I would say it hit her at probably the worst time to have an auditor show up, which was the beginning of June. We're trying to run three payrolls out the door in a rapid succession because by contract, the teachers have to have their checks when they check out. And this year, we were dealing with a lot of that Affordable Care Act issues that are now coming into play that are now beginning to affect us as a school district um, in trying to understand these new rules. Um, I will tell you this, uh, we called in Blue Cross and Blue Shield representatives, we called in Allegiance, our flex plan administrators in to do some staff meetings. We have gone to trainings in April and stuff to try to understand this. And the amazing thing to me is what we were told in April changed by the 1st of June. <laughs> and things are changing so rapidly with the interpretation of the rules on Affordable Care Act that Blue Cross and Blue Shield and Allegiance do not want to put out brochures telling you what it means and what the rules mean because a week later they'll be changing their answers to those questions. So they are very good about getting together with us and explaining things, but we've had some very strong conversations with the staff trying to explain their benefits and the rules and regulations with regard to their benefits, but we're, I feel comfortable that we're going to be heading into next year lined out and ready to go. Um, and I will assure you not all school districts are on that same page. Um, so that's been stressful also. And then, you know, to top it all off, um, you know, I, I would say that Mrs. Morgan did a very nice job working with the auditors. And, uh, you know, there are a few things, and you'll see a recommendation in here for us to provide some more consultation for her. Um, it's not so much because she doesn't know what she's doing. It has to deal with the complexity of our business and what we do and making sure that the people we bring in, that we are providing the correct support and training for them. So. Um, when we get to that part of the agenda, we'll talk a little bit more about that. And that's all I have at this time. Okay, so we're going to go on to new business, um, budget amendment resolution. As we talked about the septic drain field, which I would commend this board on its thought process and on the way you've deliberated on this issue. Um, you've done a nice job understanding and listening to the engineer. And I believe the solution that you've come up with uh, by moving the drain fields to the west of the district's uh, office is going to be the safest option for our kids. But it does come with a price. And as such, we put out a proclamation for a budget amendment. And at this time, we need to move to adopt a budget, budget amendment for the school district in the amount of 250000 to fix the unforeseen problems with our separate drain field. Awesome. So. Discussion? Call for the question? Did you want to, did you ever, no, you're just. I'm sorry, I was just. Flex, okay. Right. So call for the question. <laughs> <laughs> sorry. All those in favor? Um, Aye. <laughs> okay, we also have the debt service fund. We have monies that have been collected through protested taxes that have been placed in the debt service, and we need to move those monies into a fund account where we can actually utilize those monies. We talked about uh, moving these monies into the building reserve fund and that way for uh, projects, whether it be the roof or whether it be the drain field, we could then utilize those monies on facility construction needs of the district. So the board has asked at this time to transfer or 
move to direct the district clerk to transfer those funds from the debt service into um, the building reserve funds so that we can access those monies. And those monies will be necessary to help complete the septic drain fill project. Also move. Second. Discussion? Call for the question? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. And then we're on to business manager training contract. Um, I will let Mrs. Morgan, if you'd like to kind of chime in and share a little bit about what this is about. Okay, the two main areas he was talking about is the fixed assets, to do an inventory of our fixed assets, update our schedule so they're both, you know, comparable, apples and apples, and about coding so that as purchase orders are coded, they're coded properly, anything over $5,000 should have a special object code, and that's for coding so we can pick those up and go to close out at year end. And the other item was the, um, the, the grants, the miscellaneous grants, and have what's called a project recorder code, and that's like a little tag item. So we have your sequence of accounting um, codes, but you have another sequence of numbers that will tag that particular grant from the revenues to the expenses, so at year end we have to reconcile all that. You may have, say, 10 different grants. This should just like match it all together really nicely. So they come in and help us get all that together set up so that from that point forward it should be, as um, long as our personnel too does the coding properly, we should be able to really do a quick, or a quicker, more efficient way of reconciling because it's a nightmare. I talked to Kathy and she said she, they've had several takes days to do. And this just helped. Kathy Benando. Kathy Benando, yeah. And so, essentially, when we talk about the fixed asset, you'll recall back in 2007, we hired a company to come in and do a fixed asset inventory for the school district. And they recommend that about every five to seven years, you do a comprehensive <coughs> review of that process of what it is that you do with your fixed asset inventory. Make sure you're in line and compliance. And so, you know, one of the things it falls on the clerk is is this process. And so in order to make sure that Mrs. Morgan, who is new to the position, understands it, um, bringing in some uh, assistance to help train in that matter. Um, the contract that you see in your packet uh, deals with a minimum and a maximum uh, amount. And what we are looking at is for the board to approve um, the consultation contract in the amount of not to exceed fifteen thousand dollars. Also move. Second. Discussion. I want to say that anything that makes her job more efficient. Yes. And, it, and when she was describing it, it sounded like Chinese. To me. <laughs> <laughs> I'm thinking, I'm so glad you are doing that. Is that a one-on-one -on -one deal, or yeah, they're going to bring a, they're going to bring a person down that's going to be sitting down here with us, doing some training of the clerk? And, and Would it be beneficial to have somebody else sit in there too? Yeah, we're going to have uh, Louise and Donna and myself will all be at times involved in this because one of the things that we're we're faced with is Louise, who does a lot of the entering of purchase order numbers into the system. She needs to have a little better understanding as to why it is that she's doing what she's doing. When the coding goes, goes a certain places, so coding's a big factor. Because if she codes things incorrectly, it's going to cause her a ton of headaches. So mm -hmm. the thing is, we want to make sure she's involved with it. So there's going to be multiple people involved in this training. Yeah, okay. We'll get as many people listening as you that. can. Yep. There you go. <laughs> okay, so any further discussion? Call for the question. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, each year we have student accident insurance that we provide. And just so you're aware, um, you know, the board by approving uh, the provider for the student accident insurance, we make it available to all students. And when we do so, we say, okay, here's this accident insurance. If the students don't accept it, then the fact is if they fall on our property and through no fault of our own, that we were not negligent in there falling on the property. Um, they cannot come back and make a claim against us. This is one of those things that protects the school district against claims. And so that uh, Northwest Scholastic Insurer you've hired on in the last few years to provide that type of coverage for the school district. 
is it, I mean, is it, I mean, I'm sure it must be fairly reasonable, you know, for family, or is it? About $40 a year. They can pick up the wow. insurance yeah. policy. Yeah, for what they pay. Yeah, that's good. Cool. Make a motion to select Northwestern Scholastic Insurance to provide student accident insurance and catastrophic coverage insurance coverage to our students for the 2013-14 school year. Second. Discussion. Okay. Okay. Any discussion? 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 Any written in the master agreement for the teachers union and so at this time the board is asked to approve uh, wages not to exceed six hundred dollars at fifteen dollars an hour per sport for each coach so Terry Mackey, Lee Nelson, Brian Newman, Jamie Muir, Donna Hempfield, Jeff Mahler are all um, individuals that we would seek to have working with our kids for up to a total of 40 hours over the summer. Those all moved. I'll second. Discussion? Call for the question. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. And finally, we have handbook uh, changes that we are bringing forward. Mr. Bearlocker has extracurricular handbook, and I believe those are in the packet. Uh, and it's the same, just so you guys know, because I kind of always put this one together to it ties in with the high school handbook. Um, the, the one big thing is the last page, um, and it's brand new. It's not. It's the inside of the last page, page eight, and that's the concussion deal. Um, and that is, we have to provide information to parents and students and coaches regarding um, concussion, concussion syndromes. Um, and we have to have, all coaches have to take a training um, to NFHS, the National Federation of High Schools, um, their concussion training deal, and it's a free concussion thing for them to take a class, but they have to have that certificate. Um, and so what this is, is just a basic information. The parents will also receive a checklist that they understand what the concussion is and what the procedure is the student will get the same thing, um, and so that's kind of what it is. And basically what it is is if a kid is even suspected of having a concussion, they're not going to get on the playing field again until they are cleared by a medical professional. Okay, so it's a real important thing. It's state code that's mandated us to do this, so we have that in there. Um, and this is the general information part of it in the handbook. Um, for each sport that they play, um, they'll be filling out the concussion handouts. Go with it, goes along with the activity handbook, sign up, and follow the rules. Can I follow up on that? Uh, we also have a new uh, education program for coaches. It has some free uh, information in it, and that's one of the reasons they went to it. They're going to charge $50 per coach to take this test from now on. And before at this time it was free, I believe it lasts five years. Been doing not, the last five years. Not three. Yeah. All the coaches are required to take that uh, before they coach with athletes. Mm -hmm. And uh, so there's going to be an expense. And if they've uh, taken the test this year, they're still good for two years and then they'll take it. But if they've taken the test prior to this year, they have to take the new test. So it's, and that's all through the National Federation of High Schools too. And they've got a really, really nice program, not only for coaches, but also for parents that are involved in scholastic activities on how to behave, which is really, really nice information. I've taken the test certified that before. It, it's a lot better than the high school association test. I mean, it's head and shoulders above. Mr. Stigler? Will middle school coaches be involved in that coaches test as well? No, it's well, we'd like you to just because it really helps, um, but it's not a requirement. High okay. school is, it's a, it's a high school association requirement. Yeah. Yeah. That the but on the concussion one, yeah, I think so. That's because it's free. To, is it That's free, so yeah. Okay. We've talked about that. Okay. <coughs> That's the only change that's in there. 
Okay, so Mr. Brewer, do we need to do these one at a time and vote, or do we go yeah, ahead and listen? Yeah, yes. Do we one at a time and vote on this? Let's do it that way? Okay. So uh, I need a motion on this, on the athletic extracurricular handbook. I'll move that we accept the um, extracurricular handbook for the 13 14 school year. Second. On the first reading, right? Yeah, okay. Um, discussion? So are you going to call it co-curricular now instead of extracurricular? Yes. It is co-curricular. Yeah, we've had it as co-curricular for the last several years. Mm -hmm. Because it does involve band and choir. Um, and then there's also information that you guys don't get, but the coaches get, that tell how they letter and that yeah. type of thing. Yeah. Okay. okay, so any further discussion? Call for the question. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All right, there you go with that. All right, Mr. Rubalsko. Okay, on, on the student handbook, uh, for the most part, it's all the same. Um, I've added one thing on page five. Um, if you go under valedictorian, salutatorian, the very last sentence, um, I added a sentence to it, and it has stated these honors are generally known at semester of senior year for valedictorian and salutatorian. However, students who drop out of high honors course during semest second semester of their senior year will not be eligible. The part I added is second semester grades will continue to be counted towards a final decision um, because I don't want to see students stop. I think if they're valedictorian and salutatorian, the expectation should be they can carry that all the way through to the end of the school year. Their senior year, they're not here for three and a half years, they're here for four. So um, I added that part to it. Um, I add, all right, on page seven, um, attendance was just moved from behavior <coughs> or from behavioral section up to just in front on its own as attendance. Um, I think it's something that stands on its own that way. So I just thought it was in the wrong place. And then at the back, um, under dress code on page 26, I added pictures. That's awesome. <laughs> I've had these up on the walls um, throughout the school year so that we can refer to it very, fairly quickly. But I added it in here this time so that way parents can understand what's going on too. Um, remember, this is always posted on the um, high school website uh, so that the students parents, anybody can look at the handbook, uh, so it's in there as a PDF file, but I just want to have, add this in here because I think it helps out. It's easy to point. See. Oh, sorry. Mm -hmm. Very good. That that. All right, so should we have a motion on this handbook? I'll make a motion to uh, <clears throat> it's, uh, uh, approve the uh, high school handbook for 2013-14. Second. Okay, discussion? Call for the question. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All right, middle school, who's back us? Okay, uh, middle school, co-curricular handbook. The only thing that's changed or added, actually added to, is the section on concussions at the back. And it's the same information that Mr. Robowski received. Page on the other. Uh, mine doesn't have that. Which it had the very back. Had the very back. There's a back sheet. Uh, yeah, it's after page seven. Back sheet for athletes with parents and uh, signs and symptoms, and then a sign out sheet. Somehow we don't have page eight. <clears throat> I don't have page eight either. So mine stops at Four seven. Ten. And that goes into the. Are, are you on the co curricular? Page eight's after all those. Other. I'm, I'm You're on the hand. You're in the hand. I'm sorry. Okay. I'm sorry. I'm on the wrong thing. Co curricular has. Oh, that. Oh, oh, all right. I'm sorry. 
Can I even please? Okay, do you see page seven? So if you go to page seven and then the yeah. next page is sure. And then why? Because there's a reason for that. I think that was just you know, I think that was mad. Just some someone makes the right notes. So it was yeah. just an error of the conscience. Yeah, yeah. Well, I've got another error coming up here yeah. too. So <laughs> <laughs> so the next <laughs> handbook. But anyway, so you, you got to the concussion. Okay. Yeah. Okay, so that's cro cro Okay. So that's Oh, that's the only difference. That's the only change with the handbook. It's the addition. Make a motion to accept the middle school co curricular um, manual for the 13 14 school year. Second. Discussion? Call for the Good. question? Oh, I'm sorry. This is absolutely the wrong time to ask this question. Let's see where we paid the warrants. The dogs were involved here. Uh, sniffing around. Is that high school or is that the it whole checks school? The whole school. Well, It'll it check the, the whole school. All the lockers, wherever we ask them to check. Um, we can have them do uh, cars. We can go to locker rooms. Was it all clean? Mm -hmm. all. Actually, back in the fall, I actually asked if he would take them up through our property up here by the park. And mm -hmm. there was a car parked on our property up there that it hit on. So we came down to call the sheriff to come in and take a look, and by the time the sheriff came down, the car was moved. Mm -hmm. So, a lot of the schools. That's good. That's great. All right. So, further discussion? Call for the question. All those in favor? Um, okay. Then on the student handbook, the middle school student handbook, the let's see, is it the even number pages need to get copied? Oh, that's the way mine is. Is that yeah, yours yeah, like that? Yeah. So I'll have to bring that back at the. Numbers. I'll bring it back at the end of the on the twenty sixth. Yeah. Okay. okay. So we're going to take. I'm so sorry one. about that. I don't know. Okay. Um, yeah. so. Okay, Miss Ella. Okay. Um, not very many changes to the elementary handbook. Just mostly some updates, and we'll have to update uh, K five staff. But uh, all our updates are in red. So just take a minute and come through. There aren't any significant changes. Just cleaning up some, tightening up in some language, clarifying. Um, uh, the final page is new. Or not, excuse me. The next to the final page that has to do with our SOAR, our student expectations of what we're teaching. Good thing for parents to have so they can reinforce what we're doing. Okay. All right, so any, uh, any questions about no, okay. elementary changes? I'm going to accept the elementary school handbook for the 13th school year. Second. Okay, so moved. Second. Okay, so the next item is the Middle School Student Handbook for the 13th school year. Okay, so the next item is the Middle School Student Handbook for the 13th school year. Okay, so the next item is the Middle School Student Handbook for the 13th school year. Okay, so the next item is the Middle School Student Handbook for the 13th school year. Okay, so the next item is the Middle School Student Handbook for the 13th school year. Okay, so the next item is the Middle School Student Handbook for the 13th school year. Okay, so the next item is the Middle School Student Handbook for the 13th school year. Okay, so the next item is the Middle School Student Handbook for the 13th school year. Okay, so the next item is the Middle School Student Handbook for the 13th school year. Okay, so the next item is the Middle School Student Handbook for the 13th are we getting people's permission in that in some way? I can get student. I can, it's hard to get the parent in the handbook. Because mm -hmm. they sign off on the student information part uh -huh. of it. If they disagree of releasing any of that student information, they mm -hmm. have to let the school know. But to ask for a parent one within the handbook, I don't have any work. Either. Okay. I, mean, I can do that on the school's website. We can do an information. We do an information sheet that we actually send out mm -hmm. to parents. Um, that ask for that type of information. Mm -hmm. um, and so what we can do is to put a check there if they agree for us to share it out to school. Thanks. Okay. Yeah, because uh, that was one thing that Booster Club is trying to, yeah. to build a database of people that that uh, might be interested in hearing from us. And I'm sure that coaches want that for their kids and whatever, trying to drum up parent involvement. Well, you know, and I think that for a communication tool, we can work with the parents. So if your kids come in, they're going to be part of the football team. The ball coach can sit down at the parent meeting and say, here's the list. We need your numbers. We need your emails and stuff. 
because Booster Club supports us very well and we want them to be able to communicate with you. And I think at that point, you're probably going to get 90, 95% of the parents who will step right up and do that. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, okay, so any further discussion? All right, uh, call for the question. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All right, you guys, thank you for your hard work on that. Um, so we are at adjournment. Thank you guys for hanging in. This is always a long one. This is our chance to